Hey, Franny, you know how I went for a drink last night with a friend? Yeah, I do. Yeah, we went to a no SQL bar. A couple of database administrators walked in, but then they had to leave because they couldn't find a table. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Headless WP Rocks. In my last video, I had talked about what I think a lot of developers get wrong when considering going with a headless WordPress approach compared to a traditional or monolithic uh, WordPress approach, namely that they focus on page load speed as though it's the only thing that matters. Uh, when in reality, there are a number of factors to consider. Um, going with a headless WordPress it setup, it turns out, kind of frees you up uh, to use a lot of modern front-end technologies that you wouldn't be able to leverage otherwise and uh, kind of frees up your back-end to be a more um, kind of robust and more future-proof API as well. Um, but it's not, you know, right for every project. So please, you know, check out that last video to kind of hear my thoughts on, on that. Uh, at the end of it, though, I end that video on a bit of a cliffhanger. Um, I say that... I'm going to introduce a headless WordPress decision tool um, that's a series of, of questions uh, for you to answer. And then at the end, it'll, the tool will do its best to make a recommendation as to whether that project is you know, well suited for, for a headless WordPress setup or if it's better suited to be a traditional WordPress setup. So this is that video. This is that tool uh, that I'm going to show you. Uh, I hope you really like it. And I hope it's helpful. It's worth noting that this tool assumes that you're going to go with WordPress as your backend, regardless of whether it ends up being a, a traditional um, site architecture or, or a headless architecture. Um, and WordPress you know, isn't the only show in town. Uh, if you want to go for a traditional monolithic web application, you can absolutely choose you know, Craft CMS, uh, October CMS, Drupal, others uh, that are out there like that. Um, Otherwise, if you want to go for a headless approach, there are many modern CMSs um, like Sanity, like Contentful, like Forestry, um, Prismic, and so on. So I encourage you to check out all of those options. You know, WordPress isn't the only uh, show in town, as I said, but if you um, are in charge of picking a content management system for your project and you've determined, you know, whether or not it's uh, headless or not, WordPress um, is going to be that back end, then this is the video for you. It'll help you make that decision and answer that question should I go for a headless WordPress architecture for this project, or is it more suited for a traditional one? All right, so if you head to headlesswp.rocks slash decision tool, you'll see a web-based form that looks something like this. So if you come to this page, uh, you'll see the form that says, use this tool to help determine whether you should go with a traditional WordPress versus a headless WordPress architecture for your next project. As I mentioned, there's a series of yes or no questions here and at the very end uh, it gives you a score and there's a button for that to reset the tool if you want to um, try it again so with this if i you know choose a yes or no to to a few of these questions you can see at the bottom my result is is updated here so depending on the combination of these it'll recommend a traditional wordpress install versus a headless one so if you see that the yellow line is way far to this side um, that would be a strong indicator that your project's probably better suited for a traditional wordpress site likewise if you see it all the way on this side headless you know may be a good approach to go with um, so i'll hit reset so i'll go back to square one here and we'll go through kind of what this tool um, as for us here. The first one says, will data from WordPress need to be consumed by multiple platforms? Um, so in parentheses, the main website, other slash partner websites, native desktop apps, iOS, Android apps, etc. What this question is really getting at is um, it's trying to determine whether or not the back end needs to be an, an open-ended API that just serves up data to uh, all of these places, um, or if the back end just serving up server rendered HTML uh, is enough. Number two says, um, will the site need to pull in data from other sources beyond WordPress? A, a Shopify store, a CRM, uh, social media accounts, data or assets from Amazon S3, things like that. Uh, we asked this question because it's um, a bit easier to do this, to do these things in a headless WordPress architecture. You can 
uh, at, at build time using, if you're going with a static um, generation tool, for instance, at build time, you can pull data from all these sources, kind of stitch it together, and then uh, have um, those static HTML files waiting to be served up to your users very quickly. It's possible to do that kind of thing in a Word, WordPress, um, in a traditional WordPress install, but it's generally speaking, it's more painful and, and kind of hard to manage. Um, but if that those things aren't a concern, then traditional may be, you know, still still be a great option uh, for the project. Number three here is is the architecture of this site temporary, and does the client plan to move the front end or back end to another platform eventually? In parentheses, move the back end off of WordPress or move the front end to a different framework. This question is a good one to think through because if you build your site in a traditional or monolithic setup, the front end and the back end are, of course, very closely intertwined. And trying to move the front end or the back end off is really can't be done, right? You you would have to end up rewriting things. Um, whereas if you go from for a headless approach, it's it's more easily done. It would be possible to switch from uh, a React front end to a Vue front end with you know. Uh, very few tweaks to your back end, for instance, um, or move the back end to another CMS eventually and still have the front end largely remain intact, you know, as it was. Um, so this is an important thing to think through as well. Number four says, does the project have a very tight deadline and is getting a website out the door extremely quickly more important than concerns about speed, scalability, maintain maintainability, et cetera? Uh, as of the time of this recording, going for a headless setup does require um, more work. You know, you you have to in your back end set up um, all the necessary uh, output, all the necessary data, and then your front end set it up to consume that data. And it's it's a bit quicker still to use WordPress's built-in um, theming system and get a site out the door quickly. For number five, uh, you may read this one and kind of do a double take and think it's a repeat of number four, um, but really it's uh, nuanced slightly. The first um, one on my screen here, number four, talks about having a very tight deadline, so it's time-based. Uh, number five talks about having a very tight budget, however. So does the project have a very tight budget and is getting a website out the door for very little money more important than concerns about speed, scalability, maintainability, and so on? Um, so it would be f a bit faster and a bit cheaper to do a traditional WordPress setup, but you may you know, lose, lose some things uh, if you choose to go that route and they're important for the project. Number six is, does the client have the expectation that they will be able to select a traditional WordPress theme and that the theme will control how the site is displayed? This is, of course, a huge one. Uh, WordPress has a you know, long history of um, themes, and you can buy, at this point, thousands of different themes and um, change them over the years if one doesn't suit your needs anymore. Uh, so if the client is is used to the WordPress platform and used to the way themes work and they have that expectation that they'll be able to choose one of those, then uh, you would want to consider that and, um, and maybe go with a traditional WordPress site if that's a requirement of the project. If it's not, uh, then maybe headless could be a good way to go. Number seven says, does the client have the expectation that their team will be able to install WordPress plugins in order to add visual components to the site themselves, such as sliders, galleries, etc.? cetera? Um, similar to the last question, this might be uh, something that's kind of habit or, or assumed. So if a client uh, is, is used to the WordPress platform and the way that, um, that it historically has allowed you to install a slider plugin, for instance, configure a few settings, and then just plop it into a page using a short code or, or something similar. They may be in for you know a rude awakening if you don't tell them and don't explain that a headless setup is a bit different and we have other you know ways of, of managing content and that those you know plugins that add visual components to traditional monolithic WordPress sites wouldn't work in this in a headless um, approach or headless setup. Number eight says, does the client have the expectation that their team will be able to use a page builder tool like Beaver Builder, Elementor, et cetera, to fully customize the content areas on every page? So again, important thing to consider as well. If a client is used to page builder tools um, and the freedom you know, that those give you to just on the fly, willy-nilly uh, compose pages and, and stick whatever content um, they want in various places, they won't be able to use those same tools 
they may have to you know lose that capability or it would involve building out an alternative way to do way to customize different co content areas on some of their sites so that discussion is worth having make sure that it's addressed number nine is does the client have the expectation that their team will be able to use the wordpress customizer to manage content and preview their changes this question is closely related to the other one um, talking about themes because these days a lot of themes leverage the customizer for their settings. Number 10, are the developers who will build the front end of the site skilled in writing ES6 plus JavaScript and using modern frameworks like React or Vue? So number 10, of course, is hugely important. You know, you I wouldn't recommend embarking on building out a new site and launching it into production if you've never even um, you know, dabbled with these technologies or, or done some tutorials and, and so on, and you're at least somewhat comfortable um, on the front end working with these frameworks or whatever the tool of choice is for that um, decoupled front end. Number 11 in the tool says, will a front end developer skilled in ES6 plus JavaScript and a modern JavaScript framework be on board to maintain the project in the future? You would not only need that skill set on the development team who you know launches the site, but also, of course, as changes are needed and the site undergoes maintenance and so on, you'd need that same skill set. Number 12 says, are the developers who will build the back end of the site now skilled in working with PHP and WP GraphQL to expose a GraphQL API that can be consumed by a front end app? So you'll notice I'm not talking about the WordPress REST API here. Uh, in my next video, I plan to talk about why that is, why I always um, would recommend going with WP GraphQL to expose data via GraphQL rather than a REST API. So number 12 speaks to that. Um, and 13, you know, very similarly, is concerned with the ongoing maintenance of the project. So will a backend developer skilled in working with PHP and WP GraphQL be on board to maintain the project going forward in the future? Those maintenance updates, you know, of course, wouldn't only affect the front end app. You would need somebody who is knowledgeable in those areas to make the changes on the back end as well. Um, so that's where the tool stands right now. As I mentioned, I want this to be kind of a living tool. So if I, I learn new things or uh, people in the comments of this video bring up other things that should be considered, I'll definitely you know tweak these and, and possibly add more. Uh, but this is the tool as it stands right now. So please feel free to you know go through and answer these questions and kind of see where you land um, at the bottom here for, for the result. Did you like that? Go ahead and push that lock button. Subscribe.